Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Josh. So my project is called DroneStream, um, and it begins in 2002. On November 3rd, a United States Predator drone entered Yemen's airspace um, and killed six people in a car. As Jeremy Scahill put it, it was the first publicly confirmed targeted killing by the United States outside of a battlefield since Gerald Ford implemented a ban on political assassinations in 1976. Right? So first covert drone attack, 2002, in Yemen. The second covert drone attack happens almost two years later in Pakistan, 2004. Um, the target was apparently this gentleman, Nek Mohammed. A missile from a U.S. drone tore through the mud building he was in, severing his left leg and ending his life. Um, but it also killed seven other people, including two kids who were 10 and 16 years old. Right? So second drone attack, 2004, Pakistan. The third drone attack happens about a year later, in 2005, also in Pakistan. Two people were killed in a car. Eighth drone attack, 2006. Uh, 80 to 82 people, including 69 kids, were killed at a school. 165th drone attack, 2010. Uh, these kids' parents, along with their 8- and 10-year-old brothers, were killed when a missile hit the wrong house. 444th drone attack, 2012. Um, Nabila's grandmother was outside of her home picking vegetables when a missile came out of the sky. Fast forward to last month, April 17th, 2013. Um, Faria al-Muslimi, his village of Wasab, um, where he had been singing the praises of how awesome his experience was going to high school in California, uh, became the target of a U.S. drone. And he said when he testified on the floor of the Congress, um, that now, when farmers in Wasab think of America, they think of the fear they feel at the drones over their heads. Um, and he said that what violent militants had failed to achieve, one drone strike accomplished in an instant. Right? So how did we get here? Ten years, 480-ish secret drone strikes, 4,700 people. Um, and what can our relationship be with this story? So with that in the back of my mind, the next thing I did was start a Twitter account. Uh, I said I was going to tweet the entire history of U.S. drone attacks, one by one, starting at the beginning. Um, the idea basically being, you know, who, who are these people who are being killed? How do we know that they have, in fact, been killed? Uh, where does the information come from? If it's, if it's run by the CIA and it's officially not acknowledged to have happened, how do we actually know this? Um, so I started reading a lot of news reports, right? I also said that it was going to take 10 minutes to tweet the entire historical archive and try to bear witness to this in a real-time platform. Um, it's been about five months and we're still in May of 2012, right? So still about a year left to go. Um, the reason I want to do this, again, is to try to visualize this historical archive in ways that I can't even think about. I'm sure there's lots of other very talented technologists who can do that much better than I. Um, I'm thinking of visualizations like the following one, uh, made by Pitch Interactive, which is the story of every known drone strike and victim in Pakistan since the first one in 2004. When Faria al-Muslimi can live tweet the drone attack on his village in Yemen and six days later be talking on the floor of the U.S. Congress, um, it feels like there's something of a feedback loop that's already being completed. Um, to Americans like me, what may have previously been blank spots on the map uh, all of a sudden have complex stories. Right? They have voices of their own. From 30,000 feet, it might just be cars and buildings. Um, but there are people in them, people who live under the drones that we fly. Um, people whose camels are killed by our anti-tank missiles. Um, a 16-year-old U.S. citizen born in Denver, Colorado, who was goofy and loved hip-hop music and was barbecuing with his cousins one night when a piece of the sun fell out of the sky. Um, 
there are people who can speak back to the drone now and be heard. Um, and if I've learned anything from my time at NYU, thinking about uplifting things like aerial death and data um, and geography, it's that people like listening and people want to be connected. Um, so what comes after that connection? What do we do once we have an alert about a drone strike in our pocket? Um, what happens after the death toll gets counted and stored in the database? Um, I'm going to end with some final questions. What about the farmers who wake up at night to the sounds of our airplanes? Or the parents in Yemen who apparently tell their kids to go to sleep at night by saying, you better get in bed or else I'm going to call in a drone strike on you. Um, where are those kids going to be in 10 years? Um, how do you kill your way out of a complex problem? And what can we learn as technologists from the data if we don't even really have access to it? Um, anyway, DroneStream was my attempt to take a largely hidden data set, clean it up a bit, um, try to make it machine readable, and try to make it a little bit more visible. So you can check out the API here. Thanks. <laughs>